мною принято решение о проведении специальной военной операции. Putin's special military operation isn't going well. It's estimated that over 100,000 Russian soldiers have died in Ukraine. As Putin's war drags on unsuccessfully, dissent against him is growing in Russia. Back in August, Russia occupied 62,000 square miles, almost 27% of Ukraine's territory. Since then, however, Ukraine has recaptured about 29,000 square miles and forced Russia out of Kherson, the only regional capital to be captured in the war. As the special military operation looks to be failing, the effects are being felt across Russia. Their economy is shaky, and Putin has been forced to conduct a very unpopular conscription. The more land they lose in Ukraine, uh, the further uh, the authority of uh, Vladimir Putin collapses in Russia and also in internationally. This is Dr. Hussein Aliyev. He specializes in Russian security and law enforcement. Over one million people have left Russia since uh, the start of this uh, mobilization uh, recently, and most of these people are uh, young people who have been involved in the economy, who have been paying taxes and uh, were basically educated and capable um, you know, to uh, promote Russian economy. They have mostly left uh, Russia and uh, uh, we've also witnessed lots of businesses leaving Russia, international businesses, but uh, lots of local businesses who cooperated and who uh, imported or exported goods um, internationally. They have also went bankrupt, which means that uh, millions of people become unemployed in Russia. We don't know the exact figures because the Russian government does not release uh, the actual data. Instead, uh, they keep on with the propaganda campaign that the economy is recovering, that um, the workforce uh, uh, is um, still going strong and uh, that inflation is limited. But all of this um, is artificially maintained. So we, we know that the Russian economy is literally in a very bad shape because uh, of sanctions imposed on Russia and uh, because of the closure of so many businesses, because of uh, people leaving um, the Russian Federation. So economically, uh, Russia will probably take decades to recover. Uh, the same militarily, uh, Russian military not, not only suffered uh, a significant loss in terms of human resources and uh, they've also lost a significant number of aircraft, uh, tanks, uh, all sorts of uh, military hardware, which will take uh, decades to recover because the uh, Russian military industry is only capable to produce literally uh, a handful of tanks every year and uh, they've lost uh, hundreds and thousands of this uh, military uh, hardware uh, units. We, which have weakened the Russian uh, defense capacity incredibly. Russia has paid and is continuing to pay a huge price for the invasion of Ukraine. Not only has the war failed in its original aims, but Russia is becoming politically and economically increasingly isolated. Prior to the start of this military campaign, Russia firmly believed that it has this uh, influence over the EU states and um, uh, because of the gas supplies, because of the oil supplies to, to a lesser extent. Uh, and they, they firmly believe that the, the EU states will not, or uh, European states in general, will not interfere in Russia's campaign in Ukraine because of this dependence on Russian gas and because of uh, trade um, uh, connections between them and Russia. And um, that uh, the European countries will um, turn a blind eye to, to Russia's actions in Ukraine. Uh, because of the economic interest. We've seen now that this was not the case and this has certainly significantly weakened and basically uh, reduced uh, Russia's soft power to, to, to nothing, uh, particularly in the European continent and obviously in North America as well and many other uh, parts of the world. And uh, uh, Russia doesn't have the same leverage it certainly used to have Previously, Russia has tried to rely on various marginal, mostly far-right politicians uh, uh, in European countries, and uh, even that is no longer an option for Russia. So uh, it certainly has lost lots of soft power it used to have before the conflict, and it, it has lost any sort of uh, uh, official or significant influence over uh, decision-making in uh, European states. That's absolutely the case. Internal criticism of the war is growing within Russia. Increasingly, right-wing pro-war Russians who would normally form the base of Putin's political support are taking issue with how the war is being conducted. 
It's very interesting to see these uh, internal disagreements uh, developing within uh, this uh, uh, patriotic camp, I would say, this uh, uh, pro-Ukrainian war camp, because much of that uh, uh, much of that camp was created by Russian propaganda on purpose uh, in the immediate uh, uh, beginning of the conflict and uh, during the early stages of the war. So uh, this enormous, uh, massive uh, machine uh, of Russian propaganda has created this entire class of individuals at various walks of life involved in the reporting, involved in uh, political life and social and cultural life who have been uh, continuously supporting these aggressive uh, uh, military actions uh, in Ukraine. Now, as Russia has started to lose this uh, military campaign on the ground, as it has, uh, as it started to withdraw its troops from some parts of Ukraine, for example, from Kharkiv region, uh, more recently they have declared that they will potentially be leaving uh, the city of Kherson and the right bank of uh, uh, Kherson region. Uh, this has caused a lot of discontent, obviously, among those uh, hardcore elements created by, by Russian propaganda and uh, uh, who, who have been supporting this pro propaganda for a really long time. But now uh, they, they become uh, those radical elements, which probably uh, something that Putin would not uh, uh, prefer to deal with this because uh, for them much of what Kremlin is doing recently is seen as uh, as uh, de de defeatism as, as something that uh, basically weakens Russia's position in this conflict and uh, uh, they're looking for traitors uh, they're looking for people responsible for that uh, they've been blaming the generals military generals in, in charge of uh, uh, various uh, areas of the front lines and some of them have been removed from their positions criticized by this uh, uh, propaganda uh, camp and uh, so they're certainly looking for scapegoats uh, so for now putin is not one of these scapegoats he, he manages to maintain his image of a firm leader who has control over this mil military operation but we're seeing more and more signs of discontent within this radical pro-war uh, camp and we see more fingers actually pointed uh, in the direction of Kremlin, in the direction of Putin himself, who, who is more and more uh, seen uh, not necessarily as a person who controls everything, but possibly as a person who is actually willing to give up on some of these radical interests uh, that uh, these groups have.